In the beautiful and bloodied mountains of Iraqi Kurdistan, rumor is rife. The Americans are coming for Saddam. Now Kurds are asking whether they will be asked to fight. We believe that the solution does not lie in uh, replacing one dictatorship with another. Uh, the solution lies through forging a new uh, political contract between the various communities of Iraq. Without the support of Iraqi people, uh, foreign uh, attack will not lead to any kind of success. What we are fighting for is we are fighting for our own people, for our own interests. Uh, we fought the government of Iraq at a time when the United States uh, were uh, in, partner, in, in alliance with the government of Iraq. At the Kurdish Democratic Party HQ, Masoud Barzani, ex Peshmerga and mountain guerrilla, greets the great and good of his Kurdish fiefdom. Barzani led the Kurdish fighters during a decade of war against Saddam Hussein. Kurdish Iraq is thriving. If this is one of the most war-torn parts of the world, everyone seems to have forgotten. Peace has brought with it comforts never before seen. But it's all thanks to the western no-fly zone, which keeps Saddam Hussein out. And with peace has come commerce. From satellite communications to hypermarkets. It's a remarkable transformation of what was, just 10 years ago, a war-destroyed region. Now we have the guarantee. America gave us the guarantee that they are protecting the area and protecting Kurds from any attack from Iraq. We had a letter, written letter from Mr. Colin Powell. This is guarantee. If Kurds have found peace with Western protection, many have also found great wealth. Every truck passing through the Ibrahim Khalil border crossing to Turkey pays high customs levies, earning around $75 million a year for the Kurds. Iraqi Kurdistan has become a conduit for Saddam's oil and vast smuggling operations also funnel goods to Iran, Syria and Iraq. It's all helped to dampen the Kurds' traditional love of things military. For many, the days of the mountain guerrilla or Peshmerga are long over. It's rather a case of the long march from the bullet to the ballot box. After decades at war and of being used in other people's battles, Kurds know they've now got it better than ever before. It says, go, yes, it's good for us. It is better than the past, too much. It is for the first time in the history, Kurdish people ruling itself in an important part of Iraqi Kurdistan. Kurds remember 1991. At the end of the Gulf War, the CIA broadcast a speech by Bush Sr. calling for Kurds to rise up. Within a month, 14 of Iraq's 18 provinces were in revolt. But Saddam attacked, and as the wounded came in, Kurds realized George Bush would do nothing to stop Saddam. <laughs> Kurds fled to the mountains. The American government was encouraging the Kurds and all the uh, Shiites, and indeed all the Iraqi people to rise up. For a whole year before the war, uh, they were encouraging uh, uh, us. But Saddam's helicopters were allowed in. The U.S. had decided a divided Iraq would be a more unstable place. My father is here. See, all the children, children, women. George Bush, why don't you interfere? In this, God help us. Of course, the Americans called on the Iraqi people, including the Kurds, to rise up. So that makes 
uh, that, that made an obligation on the United States government to protect the people who rose at their call. The Kurdish refugee crisis became an international tragedy. In response, the West established the no-fly zone, and after weeks in the mountains, Kurds were finally persuaded to go home. It was a fiasco the Kurds still keenly remember. He did make two mistakes. One, not requiring him to come to Safwan and sign the surrender documents. Would have been better to do that. And secondly, letting him use his helicopters in the immediate aftermath of the war, which enabled him to reposition his forces and to put down uprisings uh, in the, by the Kurds in the north and the Shiites in the south. If Kurds here are to help the U.S. get Saddam, they will have to overcome the squabbling which has historically divided them. Checkpoints still separate the West, controlled by the KDP, from the Iranian-leaning East, controlled by the PUK. Both factions still operate separate armies. In this camp, it's soldiers from the KDP, traditionally the dominant of the two parties. Feudal in structure and conservative in politics, in the mid-90s they even called on Saddam's troops to help them against their opposition, the PUK. After decades at war, Kurds do have the experience at around 70,000 troops who could take on Saddam. They've got this far through sheer enthusiasm, but they do represent Iraq's only real fighting opposition. The Kurds uh, all were always the main Iraqi opposition forces. And the Kurds are the democratic uh, force for democratic change in Iraq. And they are most important because they are on the land and they have tens of thousands of Peshmerga, of armed people. And they are uh, deeply rooted in the society. But Kurdish leaders are also keen to stress they will only fight on their own terms. We are not mercenaries to rise up at the instigation of foreign powers. We are Kurds, inhabitants of this land. We are Iraqis. We are fighting for our own people. We are struggling for our own people. Before the Gulf War and the creation of the Kurdish enclave, Kurds suffered terribly under Saddam Hussein. In 1988, an Iraqi gas attack on the Kurdish town of Halabshah killed 5,000 Kurds. After using gas in his war against Iran, Saddam had turned this evil weapon on his own people. It's his ability to resort to such weapons that draws Iraq into the war against terror. Halabshah was just one of 4,500 Kurdish villages destroyed in the late 80s. As an Iraqi ally at the time, the West stood by. And the West's credibility with the Kurds suffered further blows in 1995 and 96. Then, the CIA encouraged and supported Kurds to mount attacks on the Iraqi regime. The operations cost $100 million and resulted in many Kurdish deaths. There was a team of CIA here in Iraqi Kurdistan. One was called Bob. He was famous and everybody knew him. The plan was for the Iraqi opposition to work with American support for the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. On one major operation against Saddam, the U.S. pulled its support the evening before Kurdish forces were due to attack. Undeterred, the PUK Kurdish army went ahead with the plan, whilst Bazani's KDP backed out. Well, uh, American... Uh 
tell us frankly, uh, before the beginning of activities, that they are not responsible. It is up to us to decide to continue to go on or to stop it. We decided to go on and to continue our struggle. Despite initial successes, the attack ended in disaster. The Iraqi army quickly pushed the opposition back. Throughout history, the nomadic Kurds have experienced betrayal from within their own ranks and from their friends internationally, sharing borders with Turkey, Syria and Iran, all of which have their own rest of Kurdish populations. Kurds here are loved by none. But Kurds are no longer impoverished. They have security and growing wealth. Once, the Kurdish dream was an independent state. But as they joined the new world, Kurds realize independence is on nobody's agenda. I sometimes say I should take a Bible and the Quran to negotiations to swear that we will not work the partition of Iraq. We, we cannot change our neighbors or boundaries. We have to deal with them. We are responsible for the lives, security, and well-being of 3.6 million people. So you have any, any steps we take we have to look at the interest of these, these people. Iraqi troops overlooking the Kurdish enclave are a constant reminder of the horrors Kurds have suffered. I have to be careful. It was only 10 years ago that my homes were raided, my people were taken away, possibly as many as 180,000 people, never to be heard from again. And today, as Saddam's troops change the guard, Kurds know his military remains massively more powerful than theirs. Any responsible leadership uh, would, for any, any action, any eventuality, uh, will look uh, into the fate of its own people and also would make sure that uh, there, would, there, wouldn't, there would be some guarantees. Uh, you still remember after the Gulf War, Kurds are clearly sick of being someone else's pawns. Too often, they feel their allies have betrayed them. This time, they're determined to learn from their mistakes.